up from the Shudi Chakra last week. And don't worry if you weren't here last week. Um, all the classes are on YouTube on my very poor quality YouTube channel, but um, it doesn't matter anyway because each is useful in its own right. So it doesn't matter. And these are things that you just keep revisiting and layering in. It just gives us a nice, useful focus for the practice as well. And especially as we come up to Ajna, which is um, traditionally known as the third eye. Really, this is a practice that we sort of it draws everything together that we do in yoga. So, this idea I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with the idea of us having the, the lunar and the solar sides of the body, the heart and the tha, which is where Hatha yoga comes from, and this idea that we draw it all together. And uh, in uh, other terminology, it's known as Ida and Pingala, Nadis, and through the centre, we have the Sushumna Nadi. And this idea that the seven main chakras that we've been working through run along that energetic channel. And again, these are energetic ideas, they're not uh, absolute things that you can measure. That said, um, in the embryo, there are nerve plexus that develop along the spine that do correlate with these chakras um, and particularly today is notable that it uh, correlates with pineal gland. So deep in the centre of the frontal cortex there, sometimes called the cave of Brahma, and I love this idea that Brahma is the overarching god in Hinduism, um, a bit like god in the trinity uh, in Christianity, the, the overseeing divinity if you like. And this idea that in the centre of the head there is that magic centre, the cave of Brahma, or, which correlates with the pineal gland. So the pineal gland, it produces um, melatonin, which is one of those neurotransmitters like serotonin that gives us that feel good or that lovely bliss feeling. So when you draw the energy up through the centre of the spine and you start to bring your focus here, this is really what we do in all of our yoga practice. We eventually bring the energy up and we come to this point of stillness where we get that hopefully ah, feeling for a moment. And it doesn't always work like that, obviously, but that's what we're trying to cultivate in our practice, this drawing together of those two helixes, a bit like a DNA spiral, up through the spine and we get to this point where we're like, oh, now I feel a bit balanced. And as you age, your melatonin production drops. In children up to about the age of eight or nine, they have masses of it. So they feel good all the time, they see fairies and everything, they suspend disbelief and everything is magical. Um, and that all correlates to that uh, hormonal and um, chemical balance shifting as we age and when we're young we have masses of it. So through yoga, we're not trying to believe in fairies, <laughs> but we do just tap in again to that lovely, accepting, see the good in everything part um, of the brain, and where we just really tap into that bliss, where we, some people might call it God, or we feel like, oh, I'm, just, I'm listening to the trees, I'm listening to the birds, I'm just part of that. That feeling maybe sometimes we get when you're at the sea and you stand by a cliff and you just feel this overwhelming woof, part of all of that. We get little snippets of that in our practice, hopefully, and the more we practice, the more we, I hope, can be open to seeing that in every day, and especially at the moment, I think that's massively useful to just be able to find magical things in, in everyday moments. Um, that's quite a lot of information, I know, but I hope it sort of makes sense. And so through this third eye, what we're really doing is shifting our focus back into that seeing the good, but also uh, intuit intuitive seeing. So just being able to have space to think and see clearly and just really think about, you know, what is just now, nothing else, that's, that's all. Um, so physically, if you don't feel good today, you're just really listening, you're really thinking, your gaze, your drishti is very much on each posture. Um, and we're really just commanding our perspective and bringing ourselves that little bit of a break from the rest of the day. And there's a really lovely quote from Rodney Yee, and he says, train yourself to be aware of the subtle and you will live in a world of beauty and ease. 
So again, through our physical practice, we're really noticing those small details, we're refining, and then it does become a beautiful thing in itself, just that focus of attention. So, enough chat about it, we'll just, we'll just do it. <laughs> um, so, Nadi Shadana, we're balancing the left and the right sides and we bring the hands into this centre point. So again, this is a focus. As I said, in the womb there is a particular nerve plexus that develops around the pineal gland. Um, and again, this little bit of pressure there that we sometimes do when we're feeling a bit tired or stressed. But it's very much that self-comfort, that just coming back to ease. If you don't like your fingers being there, just tuck them into your hands, that's absolutely fine. And then we use the ring finger and the thumb just to seal off by the nostril. Okay? So we're going to do a total of 10 rounds. If you feel tired at any point, just come back to a normal breath. Okay. So first of all, we'll synchronise our breath. So bringing the, the fingers here, if that feels good, we'll take a breath in through the nose. And a breath out through the nose. One more like that, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Lovely. And then sealing off the right nostril, inhale through your left. Seal off left and exhale right. Inhale through the right. Seal it off and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Seal off, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Seal off, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Seal off. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Seal off. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Seal off. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Seal off. Exhale left. Inhale left, seal off, exhale right, inhale right, seal off and exhale left. Last one, inhale left, seal off and exhale right. Just softly keeping the gaze down, lower your right hand. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And again, one more like that, lifting the gaze. Inhale and exhale. Lovely. And then just roll yourself forwards to all fours and then straight into downward facing dog. So into dogs, so tucking the toes, lifting the hips high, pedal out through the heels a little bit. And then just take one breath here, breathing in and breathing out. Good. Bend the knees a lot, look forwards between your hands and walk your feet just behind your hands. Keep the hands down if you can doesn't matter how bent the knees are and just fold over your legs keeping the contact of hands and feet in the ground and let the head be heavy there Good. and then just take the backs of the hands to the ground there just let them press down a little bit and maybe reach the chest forwards bringing a little bit of pressure into the back of the wrists and then exhale soft and then imagine that you're dragging the mat apart with your feet as you roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. So keep the back, sorry, the knees bent and let the head come up low. 
fast as you roll through vertebrae to vertebrae. Head coming up last. Great. And then just coming to Tadasana. So standing in. Uh, actually, you can take your feet just, just wider than your... Just a, uh, sorry, it's a hip width apart. I'm just going to adjust this quickly. And then just pick up your toes and really ground down through the feet there. Press the toes back down. Feel the arches of the feet working. And then just allowing your gaze to be quite softly ahead. So a soft drishti here. Almost as if you were letting the eyes go slightly out of focus. And just tune into your breath for, again for a moment. So with that feeling of the feet drawing down into the ground, Padabanda, we draw the energy up through earth, through water, through fire of belly, through heart centre, through the throat, right to the centre of the brow, and then exhale the breath straight back down, out through the feet. Good, just do that once more, inhaling, drawing the breath up. And exhale, let the breath go down. Great. And then keeping the feet where they are, sweep your arms up, breathe in, look up, press the palms together, really press them. And then exhale, fold in two. Soften the knees a little bit, come to Uttanasana, press the hands into the mat. Let the head relax, head be heavy. Keep the knees bent, keep the hands in contact with the ground, like your little animal here, four points of contact. Pull the chest forwards and then exhale, fold, pressing away the ground to straighten the legs a little bit if you can. Good. Inhale, lift the gaze again and then step back with your left leg to a low lunge here. Good. Just make a few little circles one way, a few little circles the other and then maybe scissor the legs a little more if there's room. Great. Now, just Make sure that you've got your left fingertips on the ground. If it's difficult to reach, grab your block or book or cushion and just give yourself a little bit more space. And then we're going to sweep the left arm forwards, palm facing inwardly. Bring it up, really lift the shoulder up and then start to turn the palm back when you get a little bit stuck and open it all the way around. Good. And then allow the palm to turn in towards your leg. Reach it forwards, breathing in. Really elevate the shoulder, bring the palm back. When it starts to get stuck, turn the palm out and sweep it around. Good. So you're really reaching up and out of the shoulder joint. Last one. Opening it out and sweeping it around. Lovely. From here, bring the hands back down. Now, if you're somebody that lifts one wrist when you step back to plank, don't. <laughs> Press both hands down. Press from your shoulders and curl your belly in. So your back might be quite rounded, squeeze your glutes, and then drive the right leg back. Good, no wrist lifting. <laughs> Hold it, just one breath, look down at your mat, breathe in. Breathe out, draw the navel to the spine even more. Good. And then lower to all fours. Breathe in there, lift the gaze. Breathe out, sit back in child's pose. Keeping the arms extended in your child's pose, uh, bring the palms together so you've got like a little prayer shape with the arms. Snuggle the elbows forwards a little bit more and then bring that little prayer behind the back of the head as you press the forehead down into your mat. And then maybe just snuggle the elbows forwards a little more. Stay there for two more full breaths. Really breathe into your ribs here and feel the stretch under the armpits and into the intercostals. Breathing in there. Breathing out. Keep wiggling the elbows if they want to go a little more. Inhale. Exhale. Lovely. As you breathe in, lower your hands back to the mat. Exhale there, and then start to sneak the hands forwards a little bit. So you're staying on the forearms and coming to a, a, an all fours, a box shape again. And then just start to sneak the arms forwards a little more and see if you can melt the chest towards the mat in Anahatanasana, or sometimes called puppy pose. Now this can feel really strong. Don't go to your maximum because we are still warming up. 
Just take one more breath there, inhaling, exhaling. Good, use your inhale to start to walk the hands back in, nice and gently. Good, and then exhaling, coming back through to downward facing dog. Taking a breath in there, breath out there. Let the neck be long, last breath, inhale, exhale. Good, look forward at your hands, you can walk the feet just behind your hands, try to keep the palms in contact with the ground, and then fold in two. Let the head go. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the gaze. Exhale, step your right leg back and lower down to that crescent lunge shape. Good. Adjust the hands a little bit if you need once you're back so that you can make those circles with the hips. If you need a bit more height, you've got blocks under your hands or books. That's lovely. Great. And then again, just adjusting that right hand. So and maybe you scissor the right knee back a little bit more. We'll start to windmill the left arm. So the palm is facing in. Really reach it forwards. And then when you can't go anymore with the palm facing in, start to turn it out and sweep it back. Just notice if it feels a bit crunchy and sticky, keep lifting up and out. So really slow and controlled. Keep the ribs facing forwards as much as you can. <laughs> it's the tricky bit. Good. Last one. Really opening out that joint. Great. Lovely. Again, plant the palms back down. So if you need to come into a runner's lunge to get the palms grounded, do. Press from your shoulders. Squeeze belly to spine. And step back to plank. Good. Really press from your shoulders here. Gaze down just in front of your hands. Neck is long. Jaw is relaxed. Take a breath in. Breath out. One more breath here. Keep pressing from the shoulders. Squeeze up on your kneecaps. Great. And then squeeze the knees down to all fours as you exhale. Inhale, lift the gaze. And exhale, sit back in child's pose. Let your head and neck relax. Breathing in. Breathing out. Again, bringing the hands to prayer, allowing the forehead to be on the mat as you bring that reverse prayer behind your, or the nape of your neck. And snuggle the hands forwards, or the elbows forwards, I should say. <laughs> Good. Just allow the crown of the head to be heavy there. Crown of the head, forehead to be heavy there. <laughs> Breathing in. Breathing out. Lovely. As you breathe in again, hands come forwards on the mat and slide it forwards once more through Anahatanasana. Melt the chest down. Let the gaze go between the hands. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. Slowly come onto your forearms and pad it back to all fours. And then again, tucking the toes and coming into downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out, good. Two more here, allow the neck to be long, the gaze is towards the navel. Breathing in. Breathing out. Last breath there, inhale. Good, just come through downward facing dog, Helen, don't worry. Breathing out. Lovely. And then walk the feet to the hands as you breathe in. And breathe out, fold. Good, bend the knees, roll up vertebrae over vertebrae, sweep the arms out to the side and all the way up, press your palms and exhale, flip the hands down. Lovely. So we're going to come to um, tree, but with a little bit of active um, motion of your leg. So again, the soft gaze, and just maintaining that calm, soft gaze as we start to move. So bring the hands to your uh, hips, feet hip distance apart. And again, just feel that you pick the toes up, plant them down. Breathe in there. And then as you breathe out, bring your right leg up. Lovely. And then take the leg out to the side, back and around, turning the leg inwardly, and then across your body, and then open it out to the side. So almost like a kind of figure eight shape. And notice if you can really keep pulling up on your standing leg, 
and start to try and stabilize the pelvis a little bit. So it's going to want to move a bit, that's fine, but just keeping that calm plate is great. Come out to the side again, and this time hold it out to the side. Really lift up as if someone's got a string on your knee. Pull up, squeeze up, so you're really working the hip flexors, but your gaze and your breath are calm. And see if you can hover the leg, so you're not quite bringing it in. Hold there, sweep the arms out to the side, Just soften the shoulders, notice if they're tense. And then allow them to lift, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands back through heart center, bring the knee forwards. Give it a little hug into your chest and place it back down. Great. Give your left ankle a little roll and then come back to that grounded place again. So you're going to find Padabanda, pulling up really strongly on your right leg, hands to waist, and squeezing the knee into the chest as you exhale. And then just keep your breath moving freely in and out through the nose here as you take those rotations. Good. Keep it going there. Noticing if you can really draw in through the low belly to stabilise. Good. And then the next time you come out to the side, squeeze the knee up as if someone's pulling on a string on the top of your knee. And then squeeze the foot towards the inner leg. Good. Sweep the arms out to the side. Inhale, reach it up. Look up. One more breath. Exhale, hands through your heart center. Lovely, squeeze the left knee in. Give it a little hug. And place it back down. Oh, it's quite hard, isn't it? <laughs> Come back to the top of the mat. Again, we're gonna keep the feet just under our sit bones there. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Look up, press your palms. Exhale, fold in two. Let the head go. Inhale, extend your chest, keep the knees bent, and then exhale, fold in. From here, we're just going to step back to downward facing dog. So really press from the shoulders, step the feet back, exhale there. Again, hug your right knee towards your chest, and make those same circles that we just did in tree pose. So just notice again, if you can really keep a sense of the low belly drawing in, the left leg strong. So we'll just do three, three figure eights, and plant your right foot down. And then the other side, so nearly done. If your wrists are getting a little bit tired, we're nearly there, just three on this side. Again, just exploring the range of motion, noticing how your left glutes work actively. Lovely. And then come back to downward facing dog, and just feel maybe a little bit of space and length there through the center of the body. And then bend your knees, all fours, and again, child's pose. Turn the palms to face up. Let the head go. Give the forehead a little massage your mat. Give the wrists a little roll. And then let the hands come back alongside your hips in reverse prayer there. Good. Then come back through all fours. Into downward facing dog. Lift your right leg, really squeeze that right leg up straight so the hips stay in the line. Look into your belly. Breathe in. As you breathe out, squeeze the knee as tight as you can to your nose. You can go up a bit on the ball of the back foot if you need, but don't move your hands and then step the right foot down. Lovely. And then just wriggle the back foot away a little bit. Oh, so if you need your block <laughs> for a warrior three coming into a balance here, just grab your block now, or if you want to go against the wall, that's also fine. <laughs> so from that runner's lunge, we're just going to, again, keep the feet parallel like a train track. Gaze is just ahead of you and forwards of your feet and your hands. Calm breath, start to tip the weight forwards, actively press down through your right foot. Feel your low belly toning and feel your right glutes working. So it's going to feel fiery in the leg, but we're perfectly focused and calm on that. And then we're going to squeeze into the left glutes to lift your left leg up behind you. Maybe you tiptoe the fingers forwards again so you've got length through the sides of your body. The neck is reaching long but without strain. Gaze is just down neutrally ahead of you. Breathing in there. Good. Breathing out. Light touch on the fingers if you can. Breathing in. Maybe if you want to challenge yourself, you can float the arms forwards, but absolutely not essential. And then bring the hands out. 
lower the back leg down. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> Sweep the arms up, breathe in. Breathe out, hands to heart centre. And then almost imagine that you're getting hold of the left side of your wrist. You, uh, ribs, sorry, you can if you want with your right hand. Wrap them around and get as much of the left shoulder outside your right knee as you can. Press the hands to heart centre and start to roll the chest open in a twist. Again here, soften the gaze. Feel that natural spiral from tail to, to your brow. And just notice if the chin tends to tuck. Find length there. Maybe coming into a high lunge if you wish. And just allowing the breath to be long and fine. Even though there's fire in the belly here, strengthen the legs. Good, last breath. Lovely, unwinding it, lower it down. You can step to dog just to stretch it out and then if you need to come to child's pose for a couple of breaths, please do. Take a breath in, breath out. Just shaking out the head, yes and no. Wherever you are, the gaze is a little inward. Just listening to your breath. And when you're ready, we're gonna come back from down dog as you step forwards in that lunge. So squeezing the left leg up, Again, calm, focus to look forward, squeeze knee to nose, and curl in for a moment, look in, and plant the foot down. And then adjust the back leg to lower, so you keep that foundation of the hands firm there. Okay. And then again, we're going to just adjust as we need, if you need a block, you can grab a block. Revisit your runner's lunge, so you're charging up the legs, you're on a train track. And then shift the gaze just ahead of you. Start to shift the weight forwards more consciously in the left foot. Squeeze the left glutes. Press the ground away to come up. So your back leg is strong. Soften the tongue in your mouth. Just notice if you want to grit your teeth. Instead, send the awareness into your ground. Press the back foot away. Good, you're all looking beautifully stable. Soften the jaw. If you want to see if you can lift the arms, do. But as I said, it's not essential in any way. Calm breath. Soften the arms down. And lower it back to your lunge. Good. And then as we inhale, we'll sweep the arms up. Shift the gaze up. Lengthen. Exhale, hands to heart. Take another breath in to lengthen up through the ribs. Wrap them over the outside of your right knee as you breathe out, pressing the palms. Again, just checking in with the sides of the neck there. See if you can feel length from the tail to the crown, especially if you're coming up into the runner's lounge. Try not to create tension with the jaw or the mouth. Really press the ground away, great. On your next exhale, well unwind it, well done, it's not easy. And again, step it back to downward facing dog. Just find the center line, stretch out, breathing in. And breathing out. Good, from here we're gonna walk forwards to our hands. So inhale, exhale, fold. Bend the knees, loads. Roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. As you come up, start to send the chest forwards and the tail back, open the heart out, sweep the arms up and exhale, float the arms down. Good. So you might want your block again for the next posture. If you do, just grab it now, have it in your hands. And we'll step to the back of your mat. Actually, don't step to the back of your mat because then you can't see. Stay facing forwards. Step the feet hip distance apart. And then sit your left foot back so that the left foot is turning out um, at 45 degrees. So for you guys, it's going to look like this. So you've only got a, about a leg length between your feet, not too much. And then breathe in here, breathe out, go straight forwards, bend the knee if you need, and consciously lay your belly over that front leg. So if you've got your block, you can put the block in front of you here to give you height. If your fingertips reach the ground, use your fingertips. Breathe in, lengthen, and breathe out, start to bring the body over that front leg. We'll wave the spine twice more. Absolutely fine to have quite a big bend in that front leg. Good. Last breath, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And then we'll stay here for two breaths. Allow the head to be heavy. Lengthen the 
the neck. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Great. Bend that front knee. Inhale, lengthen it forwards. And then just join the feet together again in a hip distance. Padangasasana or forward fold. Let the backs of the hands come down. Let the head relax in. Great. And then again, bending the knees even more. Roll up through the spine. As you start to come up, send the tail back and the chest forwards with bent knees. Open the heart. Sweep the arms up. Look up as you press the palms. And exhale, float the arms down. Good. And then we'll just change sides. So stepping your right leg back this time. No. Yes. <laughs> right leg back. Just the legs distance. So you're going to fold over your left leg. Again, uh, squaring the hips. Breathing in there and breathing out to come forward. You can bend that knee as you come forwards, lay the belly over the thighs, and then bring the fingertips down. Good, let your head go. And then again, inhale, wave the spine open. Exhale, let it go over the leg. Twice more like that, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. And exhale. And stay there. So it's a modified uh, pass bottom asana. Often we do this with reverse prayer, but today just allow the throat, the shoulders to relax. And the intention is that we're just bringing the gaze inward again, listening to the breath. Good. And then from here again, bend that front knee, step the foot towards its partner, and exhale, fold. Again. From here, we're just going to bend the knees, roll it up. As you come through, a little way through the spine, almost like a standing cat cow, reach the arms up as you straighten the legs. Exhale, bring your hands back down to Tadasana. Lovely. We'll just take one more um, standing balance here before we come down to the ground. So again, let's start this with feet hip distance under your sit bones. Almost like a little ukatasana, a little chair. Let's just soften the arms down. So throw them forward, sit low, sweep the arms up, stay in a little chair, a mini one, and then exhale, bring the right hand in front of your face, cross the left arm all the way under and around. So you're like in a little mini chair, just make sure that you can see your toes. And then shift the weight to your right leg, pick the left leg up, squeeze it across. Absolutely fine to balance the toe, if you want to wrap twice, you can. And then sit low. Eagle pose. So again, here, we've got that focus in front of us, the hands. Notice if you can soften your gaze beyond your hands. Reach the elbows slightly forwards, up, away, and down. And then again, lengthen through the sides of the neck. Soften the brow, soften the eyes, soften the jaw. Good, finding its stillness. Awareness of the subtle changes in your foot. Awareness of any wanderings of the tension to the legs, burning a little. Come back to the breath. Well done. And then unwind your wings. Sweep them up as you unwind your leg. And exhale, just float it back down. Good, again, sweep it forwards, back to the hands forwards. Reach it up. Exhale, stay in that slightly odd little half chair. And then taking the arms the other way. So whichever way you can go last on your left arm in front, right arm under, wrap it around. Shifting the weight to your left leg. Right leg. I've got confused. <laughs> whichever side you haven't done, <laughs> you'll know quite quickly when you get there because that leg will be tired. Good. And sitting low. Two more breaths there, inhaling, exhaling, softening the gaze, sitting low. Notice if you can scoop the shoulders once more, forwards, up, away and down. Lovely. And then as you inhale, unwind the wings, reach it up, come to that parallel position and then swan dive down. So press the palms out to the side, come all the way forwards and let the head hang. 
begin a little halfway lift as you breathe in and breathe out, fold. Inhale once more. Press the hands down as you step it back to plank. Really press from the shoulders. Lovely. And then we'll lower the knees. Chest, chin. So really squeeze the belly in as you lower the chest. Inhale through a little cobra. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Exhale, lower down. Good. Take one more cobra like that. So you're going to really um, think about energising the legs. Doing the tail between the legs and then sweep the shoulders down the back or squeeze the shoulders down the black back. Inhale, front of the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze. Hold, inhale, exhale to ripple it back down. Good, pressing into your hands as you breathe in. Breathe out, sit back on your heels. Let the head go. Inhale fully, exhale fully. And then allow the hands to rest back in child's pose alongside your feet and allow the head to rest on the mat for a moment. Breathing in there. Breathing out. Lovely. And then from here, just roll yourself up to kneeling. Walk the fingertips back. Little modified Varasana, squeeze the shoulders together, squeeze the upper arms together, lift the chest, and then if you wish, lift the hips. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, two more breaths there. Inhale, exhale, lower it down. Good. Come back through the centre. And then we'll come to kneeling for Ustrasana Camel. So if you want to fold your mat for a little bit of extra padding, go ahead and tuck the toes under. If your little toes find it hard to reach the ground, you can always give them a little helping hand there. And then come back for kneeling. Lovely. So again, turn the palms forwards for a moment. Squeeze the shoulders up, back and down. And then bring the hands to your low back. Start to really keep Sorry, keep wrapping the um, upper arms back and the shoulders down your back and then squeeze the inner line of the legs. So again, really feeling that sense of the knees drawing in and up from the ground through Svadhasana, through Manipura, so the belly in is strong. And we're going to lift the heart centre as we squeeze the shoulders back even more and then start to open the throat. And then if it feels good, you can start to let the head go back, start to let the chest open up even more. And then inhale, bring it back. Exhale there. If it feels like you're pretty strong in the core, you can start to bring the hands back. If you feel any worry as you start to do this in the low back, just keep the hands there for support. So we're going to do the same thing. Roll it open. Squeeze the shoulders down. Squeeze up through the foundation there of the legs and the pelvis. And then allow the hands to come back. As you draw it forwards, take a breath in. And as you breathe out, rock it up. If you want to try and release the feet and do one more, you can. Otherwise, come to child's pose. If you want to take one more, inhale, lift it up, drive the hips forwards, lift the heart centre, lift the throat, allow the brow to arch open, take a breath in. Breath out, one more, inhale, exhale. And if you use the inhale and a squeeze of the inner legs and a little rock to lift yourself up. Good, lovely. Sit back on your knees for a moment. Stretch it out to your child's pose as you breathe in and breathe out. Just lengthen out the low back a little. And then bring the hands back, knee your knees, walk it back to all fours and then into downward facing dog. Breathing in there. Breathing out. And then up to you, you can either come through all fours and lower down through knees, chest, chin, or you can roll to plank and lower through a full plank. Absolutely your choice. Either is a good choice to take and lower to your mat. Slide the forearms forwards once you get there and really keep the elbows 
under the shoulders. Great, so once the elbows are actually stacked under the shoulders, start to energize the legs, draw the tail under, and then again, lift from the belly to open the heart, to lift the throat, lift the gaze a little, and then look up slightly towards your brow. See if you can stay there with the eyes lifting up for another three breaths there. It's softening the jaw. If it gets a little much on the neck, do you lower? Last breath, go keep reaching the back of the heart forwards more, Helen, even more opening across the collarbones. Lovely. And then lower it all the way back down to the mat for a moment. Press the hands under the shoulders, peel through a little cobra, and then exhale back through child's pose. So again, we're just going to come through a little bit of strength work and strengthening and opening into the shoulders. Um, again, just see if you can maintain that really calm, clear focus as you do this, no clenching of the jaw and the brow. So we're going to come back onto our forearms and step it into a forearm plank here. So remember, you can take a rest whenever you need. Keep the gaze softly ahead and just start to almost make little circles with your hips. Don't lift the hips up and down so we're keeping you in a straight line as if you were like one of those sliding trolley trays that go in the middle of the table just rotating around and around. The surface of your back stays completely even and then when you've done a good three each way, lower the knees and sit back in child's pose. And let the, the shoulders have a rest by bringing the hands back alongside the hip. Good. And just give the head a little turn side to side. If you need to rest a little longer, please do. Otherwise, we're going to try to peel up from sphinx into that posture. So you'll come back onto your belly. Just worm forwards onto your belly with the forearms. Uh, Sorry, elbows under shoulders and the forearms planted down, fingers spread. As you breathe out, start to really curl through the belly. So much so that the thighs lift up, press onto the tops of the feet and then step over onto your feet once more. And here we're just going to go forwards and backwards. So rolling forwards over the toes and back. We'll just do five. Make them really calm and strongly connected. Keep drawing belly to spine. Don't allow the hips to sag or go up and down. It's tough, I know. Good, last one. Keep drawing up through the pelvic floor strongly. Well done, lower the knees. And then worm the belly down through your sphinx, lower all the way to the mat, and press it back to each child's pose again. Well done. Have a little rest for a moment. And the forearms can come back alongside the body there. Palm stays up, lovely. You might want to turn the head side to side again a little there. Just releasing the neck and the shoulders, maybe give them a little shrug out. So <clears throat> we'll come through dolphin. The ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate, uh, not ultimate, the fullest expression would be pinch on my ass in a forearm stand. I'm absolutely not suggesting that you do that. <laughs> if you know you can, go ahead. Um, but I suspect for today most of us will stick with a dolphin. So we'll come back through onto that same uh, forearm position, but this time all fours. Tuck the toes and lift your hips. So we'll start to move the feet in. If the hamstrings are tight, you can bend the knees, but we want to try and get that stack there. And then again, the purpose of this really, we're allowing the awareness to be or the gaze to be just softly down between the arms. We rock forwards and backwards and then take a little rest and sit back again in child's pose. We'll repeat that once more. And again, this is a little bit sometimes um, about openness and strength, and also just sometimes a little bit of a fear or a um, belief reaction. So you can um, 
if you want to play with little legs popping up, coming in, maybe lifting one leg, maybe seeing if you can hop a little. I'm talking to those of you I know that have been coming to stronger classes or working on headstands and that would be enough and then you'd come down. I'm not going to even attempt to teach you the full version because I don't want you to injure yourselves and I'm not there to help you. Good. And then when you've had a little go at that, so what we're doing there is really lifting up through the centre and that calm focus. If you would like to come back and try a little bit of headstand prep, you're very welcome to. So usually in my practice, headstand will be the last posture really that I practice. But for today, as we're here, if you want to, you can interlace your fingers, press the forearms down, and then for today, we'll open the palms back out, so you can see, and bring the back of the head into that cradle. And you might just want to stay here, and then again, you're pressing the forearms down. You might lift one foot, just for a little bravery. If you feel you can squeeze into a ball there, you can squeeze into a ball. If you want to go up and you want to use your wall, and that's something we've been doing in class, you could do that. And then you could come back down and give it a rest in child's. We'll keep going with this dolphin prep and just get used to that feeling in the shoulders and the feeling of letting the blood come into the head as well. So a few things just to have a little try there. Have rest in between. Good Katie, keep squeezing the inner line of the legs. Now let your knees start to come to stack on top of your hips, Katie. So raise the knees, keep squeezing the inner line of the legs. That's it, just keep bringing them up even more, you've got it. And then if you want to extend the toes up, go ahead. Good Alison, keep really pressing through the forearms and thinking about the tail stacking. And then rather than kicking, if you're coming up, squeeze the knees to the chest. That's it, Katie. Now squeeze up in your kneecaps and straighten your legs all the way up. Good. Coming. Coming. <laughs> Good. So if you are temp attempting it, really keep pressing the forearms down. Yeah. Good, Irene. Lovely. And then take a little rest when you've had a few goes. And then from child's pose there, we'll just slowly, slowly roll it up to kneeling. And then from kneeling, um, just send your legs to one side and then straight out in front of you. And we'll bring the, um, <laughs> I keep getting confused today, bring your right leg back and your left leg in front. Yeah. <laughs> done it now so we're doing that right leg back left leg in front and so you've almost got a 90 90 seat if you can do 90 90 you could but your hips going to be up actually let's not do that ignore that <laughs> squeeze the the, the, uh, the right foot in behind you and try and ground your hips lovely and then just lengthen tall here so you're going to be twisting to your left first the right hand's going to go behind you and you're going to bring it outside your left knee and then roll the left shoulder back, and then a little pull on the outside of that knee to rotate the chest around. So this is a modified Bharad Rajasana. You can take this with um, a lotus and a bind. This is a really lovely place as well to ground from the seat, really lengthening up through the middle of the spine, rolling the heart open, and then just feeling that softness in the brow. Gaze is turned to where you're going. And slowly come back through the centre, take a little counter twist. Good. And then just extend the legs forwards. Let's do that little roll with the, so the feet are quite wide, wider than your hips, and extended in front of you. Keep the feet just rolling side to side here, just moving the hips through internal and external rotation. Good. And then extend the legs straight forward, so you'll bring your left leg back and your right leg in. And just to the place where you can start to ground that left hip down. So sometimes it can feel a bit tight. You can rock it back and forward a little bit. And then as you inhale, bring the right hand behind you, lengthen up. 
Exhale, left hand wraps across and you're turning from the ribs again. So you've got the firm grounding here in your seat. Drawing up through the centre of the belly, opening the heart, softening the throat and the gaze is following the rotation of the spine. And again then, the gaze is so important in everything that we do. So where we look is where the body thinks we're going to go. <laughs> and then slowly turning the other way. So softening the gaze in our practice is really literally restful and brings us into that calmer place there. Um, lots of you I think will know about this, the suboxital nerve here that when we're looking, that's ready to go. It's, it's ready to send the body into action. And that's what keeps our um, nervous system, can keep us very wired from looking at a screen because it's constantly stimulated. So if you haven't unwound your twist, sorry, do. And then come back to centre and we'll just take the legs side to side. Lovely. And then extend them straight forwards on your mat in Dandasana. Roll the shoulders up, back and down, press the palms down. And then just gaze towards your toes. And really you feel that you draw the heels down into your mat. The legs are working actively to come back into your seat. And from that firm foundation, you're able to lengthen up through the spine. Breathe fully, soften the jaw. notice all the points of contact with your legs on the mat, any tension in the shoulders, any holding on in the front or back of the neck, the sides, the jaw. And then drag the heels towards you, again inhale, send the tail back, exhale lengthen the belly over your legs, start to reach for your big toes for Paschimottanasana, taking that little bind and then Again, you can take another inhale and exhale, fold. So you're bringing the forehead down, really relax the back of the neck, let the brow be heavy. If it feels good to straighten the legs, go ahead. If not for today, don't worry about it. Keeping the legs bent doesn't mean they aren't active. So if your legs are a little bit bent, you're still flexing the feet. You're still working to have that sense of pushing the feet into something to straighten up from the hips. And then again, listening quietly, inwardly to your breath. We'll take three more here, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Last breath, inhale, exhale. Use your inhale to roll it up. And we'll come straight to laying down. So you might want your block handy. Um, I'm going to give you options. You can take shoulder stand and plow, or you can, um, sorry, with a bridge from, we'll take bridge, and then you can take shoulder stand and plow. From your bridge, if you want, you could just lift your legs straight up, and I'll show you that, and be in a supported shoulder stand. So if you don't want to take either of those options, you can stay in a supported bridge and then maybe put legs up the wall for a moment. So we'll come to laying down, nice and slow, and then bring the soles of the feet in line with the hips. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, roll the spine up, lift your hips, and draw the shoulders down your back. So this is where you can take your block on any facet. You might have it on the lowest one today, you might have it on the highest one. Come onto the highest one, I usually find pressing onto the balls of my feet helps me to get the block in a really nice, uh, even position. So you want to be just on the sacroiliac and you don't want to feel that the block is buckling in any way. If you don't have a block, just take a, an active bridge and then you can take shoulder stand. I'm just breathing here, actively using the legs. Even if you've got the block there, try to Feel a little bit the inner line of the legs and the low belly, just giving you that little bit of support. 
And then the gaze is just soft again up to the sky, so your awareness is on the brow. If you want to elevate the legs from here, you can always come down and look if you're not sure. If the block is in the right place, it should be easy to lift them, so mine actually isn't, because it's wobbling. So it shouldn't wobble at all when it's in the right place. You can always hold on to your mat if you feel nervous and be here. Or you can just come to shoulder stand or remain in your bridge if you're happy there. If you're coming to shoulder stand, we're going to wrap the upper arms in, straight up with the legs, and we'll straight away come to plow. If the knees need to bend, that's fine. You can be here. Keep your back supported for today. Because we haven't done a huge amount of forward folds and lengthening, it might feel a little tighter than normal. If you're happy to release the hands though and it feels open, of course, go ahead, listening to your body and just again tuning into the subtle differences that each pose can have each day. So inversions, some days they just feel great, other days not so much, like all postures. And then from Halasana, you can come up through shoulder stand and then slowly support yourself down. So if you're on your um, block, just lift the hips and then roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. Lovely. And then we'll all give the knees a little hug into the chest. So ideally we'd have a little bit more time in inversions today. That's a nice thing later if you wish, you can take legs up the wall. <laughs> The bedtime. <laughs> and then we'll bring the soles of the feet back onto the mat, just allow the knees to fall out to the side. And bring one hand to belly, one hand to heart. And then just breathe fully into the belly, into the chest. We can close the eyes here. Just draw your awareness to your breath. And then change your hand. So whichever hand is on heart, bring it to belly and vice versa. And again, just breathing fully into belly and then chest. One more there. And then just bring both hands out to the side. Just notice if you feel, or can feel, the centre line of the body here. And then just start to let the legs come back together and slide out to the side. So coming straight to Shavasana from here. So try to just drop straight into it. If you're very cold, just quickly grab a blanket and throw it over the centre of your body. Otherwise, just try to drop straight in there. Just feeling, again, that sense of drawing the breath up from the tail through the middle of the body, above the crown of the head, and exhaling the breath all the way out through the soles of your feet. Just following that pattern of your breath, noticing if the right and, and left side feel even. Noticing if you can soften again the centre of the brow. Notice if any colour is there in front of the eyes.
just start to press the thumb and the fingers together one by one. You can go back and forward a couple of times if you like. And there's a story to this that we'll touch on next week, or a representation I should say, for each of the fingers and a union of all the chakras. And then very gradually start to deepen your breath a little, bring in some movement, taking a stretch when you're ready, reaching arms overhead. And then rolling to one side and around to sitting. shared breath together. So we'll inhale, sweep the arms up and a sigh. Namaste everyone. Well done. 